Good morning. Good morning and happy Advent to all of you this morning as we begin the season of Advent and uh, this morning we're going to look at the gospel reading from Mark. Now it's Mark. And uh, just uh, once again kind of looking at uh, waiting and, and watching as Christ kind of tells us about how uh, he will return uh, and, and to be watchful, to stay awake. Uh, and so we'll look more at us as we prepare for Christ's birth, uh, but also as we stay awake and, and wait for his uh, second coming. Uh, so we'll look more at that this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's just begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for just this opportunity to come into your house and just to, to watch and to, to be awake, uh, to wait for your second coming. And we just look forward to that day when you come and, and bring us all home. Uh, but in the meantime, we just um, look forward to spreading your word and, and getting people uh, aware of you and, and who you are, especially in this time of Advent as we uh, get ready for the birth of your son, our Savior. Uh, let us just tell people what this time is all about, which is your son and his coming uh, back to take us home uh, to be with you forever. And so just bless our worship this morning, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. So I invite you to stand and uh, say hello to all of those uh, that are here. Uh, we welcome all those uh, out there watching on online. Uh, welcome to service, and uh, let us begin by singing our first hymn. And our first hymn uh, will be, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we begin a new church year, let us put behind us everything in the past that would disqualify us from a new life. And remembering our baptism, we boldly petition our Savior, Jesus Christ, seeking for our entry into His presence and His plan and future for us, saying, Stir up your power, O Lord, and come that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. What are those threatening perils? I now ask you before God who searches the heart, do you sincerely confess that you have sinned against God and deserved his wrath and punishment? I do confess. So you should confess, as Holy Scripture says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Do you also repent of all your sins committed in thought, word, and deed? I do repent. So you should repent as King David. 
who prayed for a contrite heart. Peter, who wept bitterly, the sinful woman, the prodigal son, and others. Do you sincerely believe that God, by the grace for Jesus' sake, will forgive you all your sins? I do believe. So you should believe, as Holy Scripture declares, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Do you promise that with the aid of the Holy Spirit, you will amend your sinful life? I do promise. So you should promise, for Christ the Lord says, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Finally, do you believe that through me, a called servant of God, you'll receive the forgiveness of all your sins? As you believe, even so may it be to you. And upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call and ordained servant of the ward and a word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Let your light scatter the darkness. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sin and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. So as we end our month of November, we are just reminded of all the wonderful things that God has given to us of those wonderful deeds, and let us continue to always give thanks to him for everything that he has given to us. And so let us say this memory verse uh, twice this morning. I will give thanks to the Lord. Let us say it one more time. I will give thanks to the Lord. Old Testament reading for this first Sunday in Advent comes from the book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness. Those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins, we have been a long time and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand, but not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, 
We are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, I invite all children to come and join me for a children's message this morning. Good morning, everyone. Let's try that out. How's everyone this morning? Good. Um, So, does the church look a little different today? What's going on? Just out there? Two of them. Yeah. So, we must be getting ready for Halloween, right? Christmas. Okay, good. Um, So, who has the Christmas tree up yet? And um, you usually put some lights on there and and some decorations. And and what's usually kind of the last, well, at our house, it's the last thing that goes up. What is sometimes the last thing that goes up on the tree? Ornaments. Ornaments. What else might go up? Lights. Lights. Star. So um, we see here, here is a, a star, okay? And when we, we think about Christmas, what usually happens when we think about a star? What happened in the Christmas story about a star? Yeah, and, and do you know who had to follow the star? Yeah, the three men, the three wise men, and they followed that star, and certainly the, the star rose, and, and the shepherds saw it, and, and they came to see who? Jesus. Baby Jesus, yeah. And so the star here reminds us about, about Jesus and, and how we can follow that star uh, to, to Jesus, just like the, the wise men did. And, and so we are, are waiting for Jesus to come back, aren't we? Because what's going to happen when Jesus comes back? Where are we going to go? We're going to go to heaven, absolutely. And, and so we're going to hear a little bit uh, about how Jesus will come back. And, and we are to, to stay awake. That means no one can fall asleep from now until you either die or, or Christ comes back. Can you do that? No? Can we try? We can probably try, but we're not going to last very long. It doesn't mean you have to stay awake, but it means that we need to um, always remember what we are looking forward to. And so as the wise men follow that star to Jesus and, and went to go see him, we too wait for that day when we get to see Jesus. And so we stay awake, meaning that we continually focus on Jesus. Our eyes are focused on him, and we remember what he has done, and we look forward to that day when he comes and takes us home. And so when we look at the star on your Christmas tree or when you're outside at nighttime and you see the star, you can be reminded of who we wait for, which is Jesus. And we follow him uh, to where he leads us, which will be heaven. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. And let us always be reminded of what this season is all about, what our lives are about, which is you. 
and let us continually focus on you and our Savior and tell people about the birth of your son this season. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you very much for coming up. So I invite you to stand if you are able and let us say our verse for Advent. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its lights, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servant in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I shall say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we continue with our next hymn, The Advent of Our King. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who reminds us to stay awake. He is coming to take us all home. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as we heard from the gospel reading just a little bit ago, Christ reminds us to stay awake. And as we enter this season of Advent, I was reminded of this phrase, stay awake. I especially remember it 
as a young child when my sister and I would try and stay awake on Christmas Eve to try and catch a glimpse of Santa Claus. I made it to one evening, I think it was around 2 or 2.30, and we fell asleep. We would stay awake. And maybe we also would try and stay awake at lock-ins. Emily will have a lock-in real soon, I hear. Or maybe it's a sleepover at a friend's house where you try and stay up as late as you can. Kurt and I, when we were in Canada, would try and stay up as, as late as we could to try and see the northern lights. We'd always kind of fall asleep. I remember one evening in college, Carrie and I went with some friends, Red Wing, to try and catch some shooting stars. We were sitting in the, the high school parking lot trying to see the stars, and, and I believe we fell asleep. And then the cops came. <laughs> we weren't in trouble, but we ran. <laughs> so we stay awake. So staying awake, how do we watch for the return of Jesus? The first part of our text kind of reminds us some things to, to look for to see about the tribulation of, of how the, the clouds will open up and darkness. The sun will be dark and the moon will not give its lights. The stars will be falling from heaven. The powers in heaven will be shaken. And we'll see the Son of Man coming. Coming in clouds with great power and great glory. That will be the sign that Christ here. It will take us all home. Of course, Jesus tells us to be mindful of these things, but don't focus on them. Because no one knows when that time will come. Certainly be aware of things that are going on, but don't focus on them. Rather, focus on him. That is why he gives us the second part of our text. You're reminded of when the fig tree, the leaves come on, out, summer is near. Certainly the servants, given their task to do, the master, to go out and do them. And continually do them, because you never know when the master will return. Be engaged in the things of the master. So that when he returns, he sees that you are doing what you were called to do. Now, have you ever noticed that you gain a deeper appreciation for people when you are asked to do their work? Imagine you were asked by someone to do the things he or she does. Or you work at a grocery store bagging groceries, working as a telemarketer, answering calls about complaints from the consumer. If you were to work like these people work, you would discover things about them and the way in which they go about their daily lives, how they do their work. Certainly there was that show, it might still be around, The, the Undercover Boss. The boss goes and does the work of his employees, disguising himself. And, and as he does the work, he gains that appreciation for what his employees do. You do the works of others. You begin to learn of their loves, and their priorities, their values, their sacrifices, their subtle joys of service. The humble delight in a job well done. When we enter into a person's service, we grow deeper in our relationship with that person. This is what Jesus calls us to do. To watch for his coming, 
by serving in his kingdom. He does this because he knows the power of his love. And when we serve others with his love, we are drawn closer to the people we serve. Christians are called to engage in the work of Jesus, to discover his priorities. Worldly success is not the way of Jesus. He does not seek glory. He does not look to get ahead in life. Instead, he seeks out those who have been left behind. <clears throat> Seeking the lost, caring for those who cannot care for themselves. Encouraging the weak, lifting up the humble. These are the priorities of our master as he extends his kingdom to the world. Now it's certainly easy to become discouraged. Maybe it looks like the church is failing. As we watch more and more people leave the church, leave their relationship with their Heavenly Father. But this is God's kingdom, not ours. Jesus does not call us to fix his kingdom. That he calls us to do the work that we were called to do. He promises someday he will return and bring about the fullness of God's reign. And until that time, we live in humble and hopeful service. To watch and to wait for Jesus is to not spend our time trying to figure out the signs of the end time, to predict when that time will come. No, to watch and to wait, to engage in faithful service, and to find ourselves being drawn closer to the heart of Jesus. He shares his love this world. To stay awake. It does not mean to not ever sleep, but it means to engage in what we were called to do. Just to go out, proclaim the wonderful message of the gospel. To remind people that it is not about the presents that are under the tree this season. It is about that little baby that was laid in a manger, feeding trough, because there was no room for his family in the inn. He engages with those. The world sees as not important. But everyone is important in the eyes of God. We get to go out and proclaim the message of him. Tell people about Jesus and what he has come to do. Restore his creation. Give people hope in this world. Remind them that this is not what we seek in this world. We seek the world that Christ will bring us to when he comes back. Where there will be no more death, sickness, trials and temptations. There will be no sin but we will be with him forever. That is why we stay awake. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus so that when he comes, we will get to go with him to paradise. Look to Jesus.
draw closer to him. Do the work that he has called us to do until he comes to take us all home. During the season of Advent, focus on him. Draw closer to our Savior. Continue to spread the message of him until he comes to take us home. Watch and wait. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to stand if you are able. And we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our Father, we give you thanks that you bring us once again into a new church year, whereby we confess and proclaim your great love for the world in the sending of your only begotten Son as a child of the Virgin Mary, the Lamb proclaimed by John the Baptist, the teacher of the holy apostles, the sacrifice for the sins of the world on the cross, and the risen Savior of all, who will come again in glory on the last day. Lord, keep us in this confession and faith and bless its proclamation throughout the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, supply your whole church on earth with faithful pastors and laborers who will continually feed and lead your people, rightly proclaiming your word, administering your holy sacraments and caring for all in their charge. Guard and bless your servants who serve your church, Lord, in your mercy. That we may live in peace and safety, we ask you to continually bless those in authority of government, the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant that they rule according to your good pleasure by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort, O Lord, all who are in trouble, danger, or illness, especially those in this congregation, for Sam, Barb, Marlis, Jake, Sarah, Margie, Karen, Dawn, Chase, Cody, Wayne, Joanne, Robert, and Jim. Grant healing, peace, and courage for all bearing their crosses to your praise and honor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Janelle, Matthew, Lou, Sandy, and Rich. We also thank you for your continued blessings on marriages, especially to Doug and Joanne, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Lord, in your mercy. As your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, came down to us at Christmas and now comes to us by your Spirit in your word, we pray for his final coming to deliver all in the great day of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You may be seated. During this time, we would do our offering, uh, and if you didn't place that in the offering plates, uh, when you came in, you may do so as you leave, uh, right by the uh, doors there. 
uh, and we just invite you to uh, watch this uh, short video uh, just on Advent, I think. I invite you to stand if you are able as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and giving thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is way, John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to the repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive 
our prayers. Deliver and preserve us to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. This time I invite you to take your individual communion kits and peel back the side of the wafer. Take and eat. This is Christ's true body given and shed for you. Then we peel back the side of the wine. And take and drink. This is Christ's true blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And now, having received Christ's true body and blood, may it strengthen you and preserve you and your faith until life everlasting. Depart in our risen Lord's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We now sing our communion hymn. Uh, whatever one I chose. <laughs> you to stand if you are able for prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom 
which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in saying our sending prayer. Be reminded that we are called to go and do the work of Jesus, to stay awake and to proclaim the reason we celebrate this season. And so as we pray this prayer, think of someone that we can share the meaning of this season with. And we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and win that soul through me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul through me. And I'll receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. We'll look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. We conclude with our final hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You may be seated for just a couple announcements. Just a couple things to remind you of. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we'll begin our Wednesday uh, Advent services. We will be focusing on the Jesse tree, uh, just kind of going through the story of, of Jesus and the promise of the Messiah uh, coming from the book of Genesis uh, all the way up into his birth. Uh, so come and join us uh, for services. That's at 7 o'clock each Wednesday uh, until Christmas Eve. Uh, and then we'll have our Christmas Eve services for, at 5 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then our Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. Uh, to just celebrate uh, Jesus. Also, poinsettias are for sale. Uh, you can sign up on the board there. Uh, they are $10 this year. Uh, once again, uh, you can put that in memory of or in honor of. Uh, and just sign up uh, with that. Uh, you have until kind of uh, three weeks from now whatever date that is. And I think that that is all that I have. You can have the rest. Thank you. All right, just to let everyone know, there is no lock-in coming up. That is not a thing <laughs> we are doing. If it is, Pastor Brett is in charge. Um, so that is no. not in my job description. <laughs> it's not in mine either. It all right. <laughs> so... Um, our angel tree is back in the narthex if you would like to take a tag or two or more. Um, we ask that you go purchase those gifts. You can wrap them at home or you can bring them unwrapped. 
Um, bring those gifts um, in a couple of weeks, December 13th, so that we can um, get those gifts to the families. Um, we now have five families, so if you are feeling generous, um, please take some tags. There are also tags for like gift cards for groceries, so if you're not of the shopping type, you can buy some gift cards as well. Um, I think that is all I have. Oh, no, I don't. I have one more. I remember it. Um, yeah, Packers won. Oh, yeah, that also. So the first thing is um, we have some Jesse Tree Advent devotionals for our Sunday school families of pre-K through sixth grade. Um, so grab your bag on the way out. Also an offering update. Um, we officially ended our count last week because the Vikings were ahead. Um, <laughs> we've been ahead the whole time, so there was no worry. Um, but the Vikings raised like $303 and the Packers raised- 297, I think much, it was. So much, much. <laughs> no, I think it was like 130 something. So a valiant effort by the yeah, give me give me the actual numbers. So um, maybe next week you'll wear the jersey. Wonderful. So sad, <laughs> but. And no one objected. Whose side are you on? <laughs> so all in all, yes. So um, what an awesome. I'll wear it twice if Emily does a lock-in. <laughs> that works. I didn't Back hear what you said. One. Yeah, I didn't hear you said. So we are just so um, grateful for the kids um, for being so generous. Um, $462 is an incredible amount to be able to buy presents. So thank you, kids. Um, that is all. Okay. Also in the, in the bulletin, uh, Bob and Lynn just had a, a quick note just of their thanks uh, for all of your prayers and support uh, during the last um, month or so, and their, just your continued support for them uh, as, as they continue to um, grieve uh, the loss of their son, but we uh, know that we will be together again, and so uh, they just thank you for all of your support during this time, um, and, and we know that we love you guys, and we will always be there for you as you um, continue on, on this journey as we look forward to that day uh, when Christ takes us all home uh, so we can be with Ryan again, and so... Uh, thank you to all of you who have uh, continued that support uh, for them. And that is all that I have. I guess I will be in Viking Apparel next week. And <laughs> going on over there, Tall Roots? <laughs> Adam Thielen, is that what I have to wear? Okay, whatever. Have a joyous rest of your week. Uh, stay awake and just continue to focus on, on Jesus. And so have a blessed rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing you uh, on Wednesday and next Sunday. Uh, go in peace and serve our risen Savior. Amen.